All right, so we're here in Wilmington, Delaware, with the fabulous Rabbit Hole. Say hi, Gates. Hi. Hello. Hey. We're at Asylum 13 for their show that's coming up in just a little while, but they graciously granted us a little bit of time. My name is Nesca, and we're going to interrogate the hell out of these Canadians. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So you just got added to the Cold Waves roster. What did that mean to you, and how big of an opportunity will that be to get your music heard? Shocking, actually, because I know we're not, you know, exactly what they're used to at that festival, um, or what's sort of supposed to be, I guess, but uh, we're extremely honored, and there's a lot of people in there that we have huge respect for, and this, it means a lot to us, it, it really does, and it's gonna, it's, uh, it's gonna give us a lot of exposure that we could really use, and uh, especially in this kind of a scene, so... I mean, we appreciate every single second of it, and um, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us about how your band name came to be? Is it some sort of skinny puppy intentional misspelling for a deeper meaning? Kind of, actually. You know, that's funny. That, that's funny that you asked that because when we get that question, I'm like, yeah, I'm a fan of how skinny puppy messes around with their words a lot, and and uh, I didn't want people that just like see something and that's it you know I wanted their people to have this perception that there's a little more than meets the eye to us and there is and that's uh, in the music and the way we do everything and that's kind of what it's about so what's it like getting the opportunity to tour with two veteran industrial acts such as Dope Stars Inc and Bile what did you take away from the DSI tour that will help you on this one the, the uh, Dope Stars tour was uh, a great like I guess beginner big tour for us. Um, it was uh, it was it was really fun, and it kind of got a taste of touring with you know like like a real I guess in, industrial band. It kind of like got us right into the you know like like, like the industrial scene and stuff. And um, uh, and now with touring with Bile is like is kind of. Like they've been like a band forever, and um, they've—it's uh, like kind of even more deeper into that. It's like it's like the next you know level of whatever you want to <laughs> have a hierarchy of industrial <laughs> bands. We feel next extremely level of fortunate whatever. is what George is trying to say. Yeah, yeah. it's really it's really cool, especially when uh, like I first heard Bile, I was ten years old, and. Uh, and like that's awesome. Like that was one of the first industrial bands I heard of. And when you get to tour, music sound like. when you get to tour with these bands that you've been a fan of for years, and all of a sudden you're, you know, sharing the van and sharing the stage. It's it's a different world. You're no longer meeting them as fans. Like you're you're meeting them as peers. That's awesome. So for those who are unfamiliar with your music, how would you describe your style to new audience? Twenty first century uh, alternative rock. So why is this tour a good fit for you guys, considering Bile are a bunch of perverted sleazy bastards in their music, something that your music doesn't seem to focus on? Well, you obviously just don't know because, us very well. Just because our music <laughs> isn't like that doesn't mean the people in the band are not like that. True that. Especially Chelsea. Oh, <laughs> that, no one saw that. That never happened. So you moved to Toronto, which next year will host the Kinetic Festival, and you found the spark you needed to make the rabbit hole an up-and-coming band. What is it about Toronto and its scene that allows it to become one of the top cities for industrial music? Toronto is a tough city. They're really hard on their bands. There's a never fucking ending amount of, of bands in that city. Um, and I don't know, uh, Toronto, LA, and New York have the similar, at least it seems like they have the similar kind of uh, uh, thing where they, I mean, they get so many ba different bands all the time that they don't care. They get the best of the best all the time. They're, they, they get it all. So, I mean, if you want to impress these guys, like, you got to fucking, like, really bust your ass. So that was the training ground for us for a couple of years while when we moved there from the small city that we came from. And, uh... Yeah, like it was the kick in the pants we needed to, to really step it up. Can you talk a bit about your style and how your uniforms came to be? <laughs> and do you make your own clothing? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We kind of we kind of came up with a concept together about like yeah. what what made the most sense with like the music. Uh, 
what made the most sense with the music that we were playing and, and the look. I've always believed that it's that it's good for a band to have some kind of a cohesive uh, look or an image or a or a theme throughout what they do. Um, I don't know. It's 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 easier to recognize us. You know, it's it's just made sense. Like I wanted, I didn't want to kind of half-ass any. None of us wanted to half-ass anything we were doing. We said, let's do the whole fucking package, the look and the sound. And uh, you know, we look like this now, but it might, I don't know, next year it might be a totally fucking different thing depending on what the music is like and whatever, whatever comes up next. So it's cool. all about the theme for us. So you had some help and input from Dave Ogilvy on your last album. Considering his vast experience, what was he able to bring out of you that wasn't there before? Um, when I went to Vancouver, uh, when I was working on Refuge, um, Dave, I mean, Dave is amazing. Like, this, it's, it's obvious why he's who he is and whatever. Like, when you see him behind that board and he works his magic. Um, he made the record sound like as clean and slick as it does like um and his input was like it was his, his job was mixing the record um but there were a couple spots where he did input in production it was there were a couple songs that i wasn't too comfortable with and i sat down with dave and i'm like hey man i don't feel comfortable about these two songs i don't even know if i want to add them to the record um and then he's like all right let's maybe we should shift them around shift the parts around or maybe we should do this or maybe we should add that or and, and he was also really cool like if i was like uh, there was one spot in the song Delusion where um, we have this little break and there's like an acoustic little break in there and that wasn't there when I like we didn't have that when we got to the studio I said to Dave like man I wish I had put an acoustic line somewhere in the record that like, we didn't put that anywhere you know in this electronic kind of record and he's like you got something let's do it right now boom set up the booth we fucking recorded it and I don't know he's just really cool just like ready to do anything if you're he'll, He's, yeah, if you got an idea, he's ready to work with it. So. You feel it, he makes it work. Yeah, and it, it helps because, like, he's into this kind of music, you know. He wasn't just there to get it done and, you know, next. He was there bobbing his head, grooving to the music, singing along. <laughs> that must be so, awesome. Yeah. So how do you balance the percentage of male and female vocals? Do you write songs specifically for Chelsea to sing? I don't... I don't write the songs. So this is your <laughs> this is your question. No, it's it's. Uh, I would like actually more female vocals. To tell you the truth, I would like more female vocals. We haven't really had a chance to really showcase che what Chelsea can can do yet. Um, she has an amazing voice, an amazing range that we haven't used yet. Um, when so the music should get on that. Ex exactly, but when when the music is being written, it's just kind of like whatever comes out. I'm not trying to like force anything out. I just take whatever is coming out that. Uh, that we like, I guess. Like the, we try to take the best of the best. So, if it happens to be one where female vocals are appropriate, then that's what it is. Um, the song "Serenity Falls," um, which is the track which is all female vocals on, on "Refuge," was uh, when we originally were in the studio. I was the one singing it, and we stood back and said, "You know what? It doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good. Let's let's try female vocals on it." So, yeah. Gotcha. So is there anything specific that you're doing to set yourself apart from other electronic acts? We're, we're a rock band. The, the, like the, the electronics part I think of as secondary, to tell you the truth. Like, we're a rock band with electronics. Fair. Maybe that's what sets us apart, I guess. We're, we're, we're a rock band with like a big, like enormous growth of electronics. We just get like invited to the party. You know? Well, we're glad that you're here. Yeah. Well, you may be glad that we're here until I read this last question. Yeah. Finally, how far are you willing to go sexually with Christoph on stage for the sake of putting on a good show for the fans? I am willing to kiss his ass. I love you. I am willing to kiss his cheek, not his butt cheek, but his facial cheek. I also love you. Oscar will... Do yeah. anything Christoph <laughs> wants him to do. Poor Oscar. <laughs> and same with Matt. Matt, Matt, and Oscar will do anything uh, Christoph wants him to do. Well, thanks to the both of them for manning the merch booth while we were out here shooting the shenanigans. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. We look forward to the show. Have a spectacular night. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you so much.